Hi, it's Karen here from Stamping on the Back Porch. Welcome back to another of my weekly Facebook Lives. So please introduce yourself when you come on so we can say hi. I've got Tim here to read the names. Hi, I'm Tim. <laughs> and you know, I did decide a couple times ago, I did that, uh, the, the panel full card, which is really fun. And anyone that places an online order is going to get actually one of those in the mail from me. I have made well, about 20 so far. They really do get easy as you make the quantity. But I did think it'd be fun to go back to basic stamping 101. There are so many little details that I think even those of us that are experienced stampers can learn from. And so some of these are from questions that I've gotten and others are just things I've learned along the way. Um, a few of you wrote in suggestions, which I absolutely loved, and I probably won't be including them today, but I love doing that because it really helps me know what to incorporate in future shows. So. Love the interaction. Kathy Snyder from Olympia, Washington. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. So fun to see who comes on and what states they're from. I have absolutely loved getting to know some of you and, you know, some of you that come back and are regulars. Pam Hexhill from Jackson, Michigan. Yes. Hi, Pam. Tim and I both grew up in Jackson, Minnesota. So yeah. let's think of that. I think there's a Jackson in every state. Debbie Bacon from Hi, Debbie. Alligator Point, Florida. Yes. Welcome again. Vicki Schreiber from Faribault, Minnesota. Kim Hi, Vicki. Carlson from and, Sun Pipes. And Kim. Wonderful. So we'll get started, but keep, uh, keep introducing yourself. And okay, let's see if that shows. Yep, that's pretty good. So when you have your basic eight and a half by eleven, first thing we're gonna do is talk a little bit about cutting your paper. So an eight and a half by eleven can be cut in half this way at five and a half, or it can be cut the long way at four and a quarter. And either way is going to make a regular size card when you fold it in half. I've gotten, I've started doing a lot of these because I really like how they stand up. They just seem to stand up for me better. But I like both. It's whatever you're doing. A couple more. Missy Mc, McGibbon from... Oh, uh, hi. Yeah. Hi, Missy. Green Prairie. Yes. In and the neighborhood. Patricia Jergen, um, Jernigan from Woodville, Texas. Great. Now, when your paper's folded this way... You've probably realized how much easier it is to fold in half and score. And I really can do this using a bone folder. I can, in fact, why don't, why don't I do that? And it's because of the fold of the grain. I know the paper goes this way, so that works well. Now, if I try to do this going this way, it's going to be against the grain, and I'm going to go ahead and try it to show you. So if I do this... I do this it still is and I'm not sure you can tell on there but it does not give me a very nice fold so going this way against the grain it is very important to score first and you know there's nothing like a scoring board and I, I score everything even when I cut the other way because when I score it then it's just gonna fold really easily so here's another tip the bumpy side here is actually going to be on the inside I have by scoring it, we have stretched and kind of torn the paper fibers a little bit. So we're just going to complete that by doing that. So that's the way you fold. Cindy McDonald from Rayham, Massachusetts. Hi, Cindy, and welcome. And then the other, I'm not going to go into all the different types of, you know, how you cut your other papers. But I just encourage, if you're new, to think in terms of quarter inches. You know, you can always go quarter inches down from anything, and that's how you'll get your layers. Or you can go quarter inches building upwards, too. So I was going to show you. Here is a card. This was by Joanne Boomers. And this was done a quarter inch in, and then another quarter inch. So I have my basic outer card. My next level, then, is five and a quarter, five and a quarter by four. And then the white level is five inches by three and three quarter, if that makes sense. And I'm going to show you, this is the same card, but how you can play around with an idea. These white paste pieces are both the same, but on this one, she just went an eighth of an inch. 
And so now this one looks much bigger. But aren't they both just awesome? So you can start seeing how little differences can make, you know, just change depending on the feel that you're going for. Now these both show three. You don't need to do three layers. Buddy Baker from Florida, sunny Florida. Ooh. Kim Torkelson. It's actually I have sunny made here. a lot of bolts. Good. Good. Now this is a card made by that I got in a swap made by Denise Wilson, and I absolutely love it. We're going to be doing this at my local event in Richfield, Minnesota on Saturday, if anyone's coming. But we're not going to do this part. I often take an idea, so this is the stepped up version. And if we're doing it in class, we can do it a little simpler. And I love, isn't this great with the cable knit? But here you'll see this is a, a same color on same color, which is such a popular look, and I just really like that. So we've got our Cajun craze right on that, and this went through the big shot. Now, if I'm looking at doing this, now even if I'm stamping for myself, I'm not the kind of person that would ever just do one card. Maybe I should, you know, for Tim on his birthday, but, you know, barring that, I'm going to make several at a time. There's plenty so, of time for that. So. <laughs> so. Can I just... Yeah. Say, Buddy, Buddy Baker's having trouble getting the audio. Hmm. Is anyone else? I think everyone else is fine. That uh, Do you I, have a mute, mute, mute thing on your computer? Could be the volume. Yeah, we're so um, we're we're so tech, yeah, we're, you know. We're so gonna... we're not people to ask. So, <laughs> but at least it must be something your end. Um, so keep playing with it. Maybe even check out and come back in or look for a mute button. Um, I don't think if I talk louder, that's going to help probably. Tammy Lillinger from Lake Geneva, Sharon Champion. Oh, hi. We were in Lake Geneva a year ago. Love that place. So glad I got you, uh, found you live. That's Sharon Chapman. Um, Janny Piercy. Hi, Karen. Per Piercy. Boy, hi, everyone. Hi, Janny. Jamie. Hi, I missed the name before that, but this Jamie is great. Therese. Hi, Jamie. Love the cabin. Knit, missing. cable knits, but you know we'll interpret for Tim. But it could be a cabin knit too, because it's really warm and cozy looking. I have a know? learning disability, so I have an excuse. <laughs> uh, it, this is a true story. Tim did not learn to read until he was forty, but that's a story for a different day. So that's we'll excuse him. His if little. I stumble, it's, I've got a good reason. <laughs> Missy Pinkerton McKibben again. Audio is working good. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm glad it's not at my end because I wouldn't even know how to fix it. All good. It. <laughs> Sharon can hear us. Now, Patrice says, turn up your volume. Maybe your volume is so low. Debbie Bacon, they can hear. Um, Amy Graves, hi, Karen. Second time live. Great. Oh, I'm so glad to have all of you here. This is fabulous. So now in making this card, I made enough for 40 people here. But even if I were just making a few for me, now this is what I would do. I would measure this... Um, vanilla piece and I can see it's four inches by two and a quarter. So what I'm going to do, this is just another question I get, you know, how do you decide how to cut all this paper? So now if you're going to do quantities, you're just going to figure how best this is going to fit on your paper to do quantities. So I know I want four inches. And I would do this by four too. And then I would be doubling them up inside. Mary Cantrell, ready to learn from the master. <laughs> yeah, right. We're all learning together. I think that's all. And you know, my job is just to pass on what I learn. I, I love that. And I think that's a great thing when you like to craft. There comes this thing where you also love to share what you do. So always be sure to tell me if you have any interest in teaching classes or trying some other things. I'd love to talk to you about some ideas. Um, Carmen Ramirez... Um, I can hear. Hi, Karen. Okay. Tina now, Webster, I can hear. Missed the beginning of it. Hi, Tina. Welcome. But you can go back and see the beginning later. Yes, and so you see how I can just go along now, and I'll make a whole bunch of these the same size, and I'll end up with a whole stack. Now, the other thing I love to do, if I have leftover pieces from my classes, I will often challenge myself to use a new stamp set and do something different with because I already have my layout. So it's just kind of a fun way to stretch your imagination a little. So I get a whole stack of these. 
And then now when I'm ready to stamp this, I'm going to stamp all of the tree trunks first. So I'm going to do them all on this one, then all on the next one, and then they'll be all laid out. And then I'll go back and I'll do all the branches. So when you do that, it becomes really easy to do a bunch of cards at one time. Those of you who do card swaps probably know all this, but I have been asked by people and I thought it's just an efficient way of kind of looking at things and how your paper goes. Kimberly Sims, hi from Michigan, and Leslie Mullen says, my favorite part of the week. Oh my goodness, what can I say to that? I love this, it's been so much fun. It, you know, I'm so glad I took the plunge to do this. So my next thing is going to be, give your stamps a home. So here's a set I just started, you know, popping out to put together. So for anyone who doesn't do this, this is what I like to do. I'll pop all these out. And then this piece, I peel off the bottom. <gasps> Trash goes on the floor for my cleaning person. That would be Kim. Tim. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> He's a jack of all trades. Here becomes my home for my stamps, then they'll fit right in here. And it's also easy to tell if I'm missing anything. Okay, so I'm not gonna even bother with that now. But I do go ahead and trim stamps. Now on this one, I'm not gonna want to because this has die cuts, uh, framelits to go with it. And this little part tells me where that's gonna fit. I don't know if that makes sense. I'd show that somewhere else. But let's say, especially if I've stamped with something and I'm finding I'm getting corners and I'm thinking, okay, other people are too. I just come in and I just lightly trim around the outside. I'll just get in there and trim away. I do this with the photopolymer too. And then on to my new thing. Carolyn Chatterson from Michigan. Um, wasn't able to get on at first. Um, almost missed you. Oh, I'm glad you stuck with Don't it. Don't want to ruin my day. You two are so <laughs> great. You're so sweet. Gladys. <laughs> I'm going to start calling this the Tim and Karen show and, you know, and uh, someone told me years ago that I should do that. <laughs> I thought, no way. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to, I think, Linda Heller was the one who told me that. <laughs> Gladys Soto from Florida and Char uh, Carolyn again. We'll love this. She loves it. Okay. Now we're talking about sticking them together. Now for years... I have been telling people to use the two-way glue pen, and that still works. You use the pen, let it dry, and then it'll stick like a cling. But Don Olszewski is responsible for this tip, but she was just sharing at an event that I was at. She just uses the jean method. Watch this. You won't see it because it's off camera, but I'm rubbing them on my jeans, both the block and the stamp, because it's really all the oils that get on it. Voila, it's going to stick just fine. So here's my new method. So far, it's working just fine. You know, you may, uh, you just may want to try that, but I thought that I've just been making too much, making a mountain out of a molehill. You know, because we all talk about, oh, they don't stick. Well, boy, is that an easy fix. So something new to try for me. Gail Stedman, hi from Lakeland, Florida. Hi. Hi, Gail. Good to hear from you. Okay, then we're going to go on. I'm going to be showing... Now I'm going to be making some cards, and I'll just share some tips. I was going to do this list of 10, and then you know me. Every tip has a bunch of tips in it, and it's just kind of hard. Kim liked the last tip. Oh, great. Great. Oh, and so if you didn't know, I'm wanting you to share in your comments one tip or any tips, something new that you learned today, or even if you didn't learn anything, that's awesome too. Then I know who my really, really uh, people are that I need to ask how to do something of. <laughs> okay. So this first one, this is our little pre-done cards and envelopes. So let's just say I needed a really, really quick birthday card here. So I just went to use this. First thing I wanted to point out, I wanted really, really soft clouds. So I stamped off once, even though it's soft blue. And that's how I got this really soft kind of cloud look right here. And then I added my little words. This is from the, oh, let's see, what, Balloon Celebration Set. And, you know, one of my other 
tips that you've probably heard if you've been on anything is tap three times on my stamp pad and then ink me after the knock three times on my ceiling if you want me. Okay, so if we do, I'm going to put this down and pretend it's over. That way, if you, the ink pads are really juicy. So if you do that, you're not going to press in too hard that's, and get that's corners. Six times now, so we'll see yeah, we'll see. So if, if, if it didn't work, we'll know why. <laughs> so I'm just going to stamp my balloon. And so this is my next tip. Sometimes if you have really narrow stamps, and this probably wasn't the best choice because this one isn't so bad, but if you find you get edges because you, it's just too hard and you can't cut close enough to the edges to really get rid of those, I like to use a marker. And things like balloon strings, a lot of these kind of things, because what you can do with the marker is just lay it flat like this. And you see how I just won't get any edges that way. Vicki Shiver says, uh, great tip. I'll so try you that. K so Nye, hi from Pennsylvania, Kim. Try two. Marie from Bloomington, Minnesota. I love watching your tutorials. Oh, great. Kimberly Sims, getting a rubber stamp to stick to the block was a very helpful hint. Great. Missy Pinkerton, they just keep coming. McKibben. All right. Uh, rubbing the stamp on the jeans. <laughs> Uh, maybe even the friction helps keep it together. I don't know, but I really think, you know, that's a good way of getting the oils out. So um, now a couple things about photopolymer. Photopolymer stamps are thinner. They don't have this cushion. So you really do want to stamp with one of these pads. If you don't have one, even using a catalog makes a difference. So I just put that on and here's my little thing. And um, a good way to put the stamps on if you find that they kind of stretch and move around for you. Again, this isn't the best example. Oh, here, maybe this one would be better. So let's say I really want this the way it is. And if I put it on, I'm afraid I'm going to stretch it out. Lay that down first on your table and then put your, your block on that. And that'll keep its shape. So now we're going to go to this cute set of... Glamper greetings. Any of you camp with campers or are friends that do? Everyone loves the jean trick. <laughs> well, look, look how the, you know, the kudos I get from just passing on what I learned from somebody else. Well, this is the deal. And Gail Stedman <laughs> says you could also use a mouse pad. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, a mouse pad would work well, too. Good idea. We always like to David. have choices. David Greta Johns. I lo lo love the tip about... Um, getting the stamp to stick to the clear blocks. Um, Great. Nice. Now, nice. here's another fun thing that you can do with the photopolymer. Well, with any stamps, but it's, it's, it's probably easy to see with this. Do you see how I put all these stamps on my block? So now, instead of going through and stamping one and trying to get everything on there, it's all going to be on there just that way. This is such a great set. It's this, um, this one, this Glamper Greetings. It covers all kinds of seasons. You've got Christmas, Halloween, birthdays, winter, summer. You have little flamingos, baking pie, flowers. It's got all kinds of cool things for all your camper friends, or maybe that's you. And the words, and it has lots of words. The words I've used here is, may the adventures continue. Now, you can see I just ink it all up at once. And I just kind of look at my words, because that's the part that'll matter. If I can get my words on relatively straight, the rest will be good. And I'm going to press once in the middle. Make sure. Ah, yeah, that was really impressive. Okay, now I'm not going to talk, but I'm going to do it again. And we'll have a moment of silence to see if Karen can really pull this off or not. Okay, let's try again. Like I said, I'm going to press once in the middle. <laughs> Much better. Wanda Show oh, hey. says hi, Karen. Hi, Wanda. Another and neighbor. Jeannie Newcomer uh, laying the stamp down first. Really helpful. Good. Debbie Peterson, love the tips. Lee, good afternoon, Lee Reed. Hi. Jackie Fawcett Meyer. Hi, y'all. Oh, hi, everyone. And here's another little fun trick. Now, I have this on at an angle. Um, just because I wanted to do it. But if your words are a little crooked, I always tell people, you know, let's say the words kind of went up a ways. 
put it on here however the words are gonna however the words would look straight does this make any sense um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just pretend let's say my words went up I can still put them on here in a way that the words will look straight and it will look planned that way so a great way to tilt things. And if I were to do that, I'd probably tilt the black the other way. So a lot of times we can just fix kind of fun little things and it turns out to be a cute card after all. Okay, so that's Photopolymer. Sharon's comment just disappeared. It had to do with a verse, verse of what? Verse of mark. Verse of mark with putting stamps on, I think. Um... Michelle Naughton, hello. Linda Darling, hi from New Jersey. Tracy, love to watch your videos. Always helpful. Lovely cards. Great. Sadie Akers, I love the stamp set and your tips. Kim Turkelson, yes. Make it look straight. Wonderful. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's a little bit. Thick. So, have you ever gone to punch a stamp and found, oh my goodness. Okay, now I got to. I can't get that to work. So now I have to cut around here and then I can go in and get it to work. Okay, this is the trick to solve that. So I have taken, this is Flower Shop, but anything that has a particular way that it fits in to the punch would work this way. And you can see I've taken a permanent marker and just marked at the end. And that is my message to myself that that goes down at the bottom of my page. So this is what I want at the bottom. And then when I go punch, that is going to line up at the bottom. And it's just permanently done. So once I've done that, it's all good to go. So yes, to, Nancy from, from Florida. Hi, Nancy. So to put these on a card, here I've done the white and white. I'm getting a little inky here, and somebody's going to get these cards, so I don't want to get too inky. Oh, Tim even has a napkin here for me. So I've taken just some strips of washi tape. I love washi tape. Uh, it's just great for quick cards. And this is from the, oh, the one that goes with the Moroccan kind of look. And then I've taken the three colors, and I'm going to just put my... Uh, let's see, I'm just going to put these on. Which brings me to another tip. All kinds of tips. I love the tips. <laughs> Who uses the um, silicone mat? Um, Dale, I have my Mark II. Mary Cantwell, great punching tip. Cheryl, hi from Seattle, Tina. Cool idea. Kim, great punch up. Okay. <laughs> great punch. Great punch. punch what? Tip. Great. <laughs> now, what's really cool about this? Kim Turkelson does. The Missy Pinkerton McKibben does. What question you just asked or saying yes to. Okay, wonderful. Now, this silicone, if you noticed, I, I put this right over. So if you get any messes, it doesn't matter. It's not going to mess this. It's not going to get on your table. Do you believe I used to tell people I would do this on my table and then just rub it off? <sighs> well, you know, that was before I knew about the silicone mask. So this is much better. <laughs> Hello, Taylor. Taylor, hi, Tracy. Love your tips. And then I'm just going to take one of these and pop up. And again, look what a quick card that is. Oh, that's not even a smudge. So that's good. Just with a little washi tape and a little punch art right there. Punch art. A little punch right there. I made a birthday card with washi tape the other day. He did. We have a friend that sends us anniversary cards and birthday cards every year faithfully, so I sent her one, um, and I made it myself, semi-designed it myself. So. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We put out some stamps, and, and uh, so... Nancy whoa. from Boston checking in, Judy Newcomer, any tips on how to keep the tape straight when you're posting it on a card? Oh, um, yeah, ask questions. Now, I don't have my washi tape right here, but a couple of things that I do, and, and sometimes they don't work either, uh, but a couple of things. I like using our grid paper, 
And so again, we're gonna have to pretend. So I'd have my thing here, and so I can, I, I put this on the grid paper. So let's pretend this is my grid paper. So then I'm going from the same line to the same line here. I find that helpful. And if the grid paper is so big you can't see where that two is, just mark a line here. The other thing that really helps me is to stand up if I'm gonna do something like that, to visualize it better. Sometimes when we're working really close to something, it's just hard to see, and then we lift it up and we're going, ooh, how did we do that? But, you know, sometimes we mess up too. So if I mess up the first one, I might mess up the next one on purpose too, just kind of go a different way, just kind of work with, you know, it's a new look. <laughs> it's just washi tape, so hopefully that helps. Kim Turkelson, very cute. Pat from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Go oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Jackie Myers, love it. Kim Turkelson, yes, I stand a lot. Yeah. Um, I stand when I do things like that. I sit when I'm going to cut. I save all my cutting and coloring for... If we have the TV on or we're settled in to watch a movie or something at night, that's when I like to do that kind of stuff. So I just kind of take my bits and pieces all over. I have a tray. I have my current project on it. So, you know, we need a little crafting with us wherever we go. Lee, now, Lee does the same thing. Great. For alignment and yep. looks. Okay. So I hope that's helpful. Kathy Seal, cute. And, you know, tell me what other tips you come up with, too. Somebody... I just said she wanted to learn about antiquing and all I'm going to say right now on the video because I don't have anything prepared but just sponging in brown makes a big difference around the edges or crumb cake and also scraping with your scraping edges with a dull scissors can also really kind of make a fun antiquing look and of course you know I'm gonna be showing a lot of different techniques and stuff as go along but the other just basic thing that I wanted to share was about masking, and I'll show you why, a couple of reasons. So here's the card we're making. That's going to someone. A couple of comments. Mm -hmm. So we have personal conversation going. Michelle Naughton says, hello, Mrs. Green. <laughs> Donna Cannon says, love your ideas. Donna from Idaho, and keep it simple, make it fun. That's Kimberly Simmons. Boy, that is such a good motto. I said that is just the way to do things. Okay, so here I am taking, let's see, this is the Blooms and Wishes stamp set. So I've just taken this and I've stamped my two uh, flirty flamingo flowers here and I'm going to mask. So then what, I, what I've already done, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I'll do it in double peach right now. I'm going to stamp it on here, and I kind of know which areas I'm going to care about. So you can see I went off it a little. Now I'll take two or even three of these, and then when I cut them out, I'm cutting right inside the area. So it's actually going to look like this when it's out. So here you can see this. The reason I do two or three at a time is that I like to have extras. On this card, I'm actually using two, but I keep these when they're done. I just put them right in, I just put them right in my stamp set because you can save them for another time. So how cool is that? So that's why this is just a fun thing and I won't have to redo that. And yep, yeah, so there you can see that. And so these two I already cut out. I've got my two. So I'm going to put these on and And this one. And we like things to blend a little bit. You know, if you've ever done, let's say you stamp, here I'll show that. If you stamp from here to another piece of paper, you get that white line like that. So that's what I am wanting to avoid by cutting just a little bit smaller, okay? And then I'm going to just take these and put them on any which way I want. So let's do one there. And when you're on live, you have no idea how things are going to turn out. And I'll do one over here. Okay, so I have those on. And then I will peel off the masks. Can you see in the camera? This all makes sense. And you have a bunch of flowers kind of floating on each other. So anyway, 
if that makes sense. And then I just finished it up with some words from Watercolor Words and some fun ribbon, added some little doodads, but masking is just a great basic technique. And if you do that, cut two or three at a time and then save them in your stamp set. That will save you time later when you want to use that. Kim Turkelson from Toledo, Ohio. Kim is going to try this on her next card. Carrie, Carrie Sterling from St. Peter. Mis mispronounce that name. Lee, <laughs> um, Lee's going to try masking. She loves that idea. Sherry Kreitz, pretty. Great. So I will write up a blog post and list a bunch of these things, but um, remember I want you to comment on what you particularly liked or learned. Next week I'll be back with one more week of Halloween. I'm going to do more treat bags and things, and remember they're not just for Halloween. So even if you don't do Halloween, it'll be good to check in. And then I have a lot of other fun things planned for the future. So I appreciate you guys hanging with me and spending this time. Love being part of your day. And if you have any other questions, you can ask me. And always feel free to email me questions. Oh, um, we'll go back to me. So, Carolyn says, hooray for the post. Um, Cheryl says, love it. Kim, like the masking idea. Mary, yay for Halloween. Great, I did put that question out because I didn't want to do overkill on any particular thing. So, Carrie and loves I, Halloween. And somebody asked me if she wanted to learn more about embossing, and we'll be doing that probably next month when I do a few more Christmassy things because that just kind of fits with some of those stamp sets. So, because I always will bring in different techniques and different things. So, but again, I do love getting questions, suggestions, things you want to learn, things you want to see. Um, Missy says Halloween's my favorite. Michelle wants to know what time next week. It's always the same time. It's always one o'clock central time on Thursdays, unless I'm gonna be out of town and then I change it. But typically I'm just trying to stick to that schedule. So that always works good. Tim works till 12.30, so it's perfect. He gets home at one and he comes right in and That's I right. put him to work. Carmen, <laughs> I'm I like, second job. <laughs> Carmen, I like the masking. Love watching your classes. Kim, thanks for sharing, Kathy. Hello, Pa. I think I missed lives. <laughs> um, Lee, I use Stampin' Blocks and have... It went too fast. I'm sorry. Halloween is my favorite. <laughs> Carolyn, thanks so much. Leslie, I must have missed start the beginning. I think that's what she said. Um, Keep leaving responses. I go back and respond to every, and you have 24 hours from now to leave a, a comment. Georgie from Quincy, okay. Illinois, Kathy, Love Halloween, and Easter, Tina Webster. Embossing is my husband's favorite. Wonderful. Oh, hey, nice. Michelle nice. Great, Kathy from Pennsylvania, Cindy McDonald, I love watching and learning. Thanks for that. Well, I love all these comments, you guys. This makes it so fun. Mary, just wondering, do you have a Pinterest page? Oh, I do. Thanks for asking. I should put those things on. Uh, and I'm, again, you know, I'm learning on a lot of things too. So I'm, I'm getting better on Pinterest, but I would love to have you follow me. It's Pinterest, it's stamping on the back porch on Pinterest. And let's see, and, you know, make sure you let me know if you need a catalog. And anything else I can do for you? Any other questions? Kathy says, yes, I'm seeing this live. Wonderful. Lee. Thanks for sharing. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of your day. Sharon, love the great tips. Thanks. Well, thanks to all of you, and I'll see you back here next week, same time, for another round of Halloween. Carrie, um, Karen will respond to you directly. Yep. Becca, same thing. Yeah, Kimberly, ask me any yep. questions. So, yep, it's all it's all good. I will, I will respond right away. Um, I have somewhere to head to for a while this afternoon, but I will respond to you today at, at some point. Might be late, but it'll be there. It'll be late. She's going to be gone a long time. I am going to be gone. <laughs> we have an outing to a book sale. That's my other <laughs> favorite thing to do in life besides stamping or book sales. So we're going out of town to a book sale. So we'll be back later. <laughs> okay, again, thanks everyone and have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for watching. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, and pass this on. Share this. I appreciate those of you that have shared this with other people and them on. I absolutely love this. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.